Welcome, everyone. Another segment with Dr. Guy McPherson. I'm Peter Melton. Thank you for joining us as we dare to look at what's going on with our climate and what's the latest and greatest news from around the world in the climate change and abrupt climate change category. It's fall 2014. Take it away, good doctor. Well, it's pretty clear at this point that we have moved beyond linear change. The days of linear change, which is what evolutionarily we're prepared to deal with, really. Those are behind us. So we're no longer able to predict the near future based on the recent past. We've entered the arena of abrupt climate change. Things are are spinning out of control on the climate front at the global level at a very rapid rate. It appears that methane coming out of the Arctic Ocean has gone exponential. So we're well equipped evolutionarily to deal with linear change. So we have this gradual increase and we predict that it's gonna be a gradual increase for a long time, but in fact, we've done this. We're, we're hitting one of these spikes that people have, have worried about climate scientists have worried about for a long time, it appears that we've triggered many of these self-reinforcing feedback loops that take us to a much warmer planet in a pretty short period of time. It's not just methane bubbling out of the Arctic Ocean, it's methane bubbling out of the eastern seaboard of the United States and off the coast of New Zealand and out of Antarctica and methane bubbling out of the permafrost, better called the permamelt these days. Uh, starting in Siberia, but now it's spread through the boreal forests of the entire world. Right, so methane has become the number one threat and in what we're dealing with. Methane is huge. Methane is a hundred times more powerful a greenhouse gas, molecule for molecule, than carbon dioxide. We've all been worried about carbon dioxide all this time, and, and Al Gore's movie and Inconvenient Truth in the book, they were all about carbon dioxide and how we need to reduce our carbon dioxide emissions. It appears to me now that methane is running the show. And a lot of the predictions have been based only on the rise of carbon dioxide and the effects that happened with that. That's right. And so now we have carbon dioxide about 40% higher than it was at the beginning of the Industrial Revolution, 1750. But methane is more than 200% higher than it was then. And almost all of that change has come within the last few decades. Right. And unlike carbon dioxide, which has a 40-year lag between the carbon dioxide molecule going up into the atmosphere and the attendant temperature rise of the planet. It's a very, very quick turnaround with methane. Methane CH4 is an incredibly rapid warmer of the climate. Right, and the so other really great news on that is the ice melting, right? <laughs> and, <laughs> and by great news, you mean catastrophic. And by great news, I mean, yeah. <laughs> Yes, exactly. Tell us so, a little bit about that. So as the ice is melting in the Arctic, and so instead of having um, white ice reflecting solar insulation, we have dark blue ocean water absorbing solar insulation and heating up the planet that way. And that's happening everywhere. All the glaciers are disappearing. And we have global oceanic currents that are shifting as a consequence. Right. We have an enormous amount of heat being stored into the ocean. People thought there was a pause in climate change because there was a high temperature record, series of records set on land that peaked out in 97, 98. Well, that coincided with an El Nino event. And so the ocean released a lot of heat out onto land, which is where most of our thermometers are. It was in March 2013 that a paper appeared and, and took into account the heating going on in the ocean. And since 97, 98, the heating into the ocean has gone exponential. Right. So the planet's been heating, it's just been stored in a battery. Right, and we weren't measuring there. <laughs> That's right, people weren't paying attention to that space. Right. So, so as the ice gets smaller. So Dr. McPherson, give us a summary of where you see us here, fall 2014. Well, now we know, based on Tim Garrett's excellent work, from, written more than seven years ago, his signature paper indicates that only collapse of industrial civilization prevents runaway climate change. Well, it was more than seven years ago he wrote that paper. It was published in, online in 2009. So we've known this for a while. Since then, based on the published literature, we've triggered nearly 40 self-reinforcing feedback loops on the climate front. If collapse of industrial civilization occurs and therefore somehow miraculously allows us to avoid the 40 year lag between cause and effect with respect to carbon dioxide and somehow manages to slow down those self-reinforcing feedback loops, 
that 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 have uh, ratcheted up to a catastrophic point at this at this time in history. If we manage to avoid all that and collapse civilization as complete relatively quickly, well, we have 440 some nuclear power plants that are going to melt down catastrophically. So I'd say it's pretty clear at this point to accept the fact that humans won't be around for a heck of a lot longer on this planet. So you're like the Grim Reaper with his uh, comedy climate hour. That's right. <laughs> you say that like it's a bad thing. <laughs> Good and bad have become such a paradox these days because while the news is dire, when you sit with it for a little bit, it, it moves people in a very powerful way. Well, I think it does two really powerful things for me. It, it liberates me, as I mentioned in another one of these videos, to, to do what I love, to do what I want, because culture doesn't matter anymore. I can throw off the shackles of culture knowing that my time on this planet is short and, and knowing that the whole thing is absurd. And in addition to that liberation, there's the acceptance of the absurdity. There's the, the liberation and there's also the understanding that our, our lives are short and, and we need to accept and move into this message and deal with the absurdity of the situation. Yes, thank you for that update and for all your good work.